Good afternoon, Sean here from Mountains Garage. Today's gonna be a quick video uh, about a lost art. That is how to time install the distributor. This is a Chevy V8. Generally speaking, there's a few uh, differences between all the makes of engines, but the process is pretty much the same. But it shouldn't be an accident when you go to start it and it actually starts. So let's see how you make that happen. Step one, you've installed your camshaft, you put your timing chain and gears on, you've lined your dots up, and it's ready to start, right? Wrong. On a Chevrolet, in this position, you're firing number six and cylinder number one, the cylinder you want to time the distributor to, is actually an overlap, which is between the exhaust stroke and the intake stroke. It's 180 out right here. That's how, you know, a lot of people say they got the distributor 180 out. This is why it happens. Okay, now I've turned the crankshaft 360 degrees, which rotated the cam gear 180, and the dot's pointing straight up. That is firing number one cylinder. And now it's ready to start, right? Wrong, unless you happen to have an 88 to 95 like throttle body Chevy where the timing setting was actually zero, then yeah, sure, you can go ahead and put your distributor in now, but if you have a advanced type distributor, you know, from like 1955 on up, you go to put it in like this, it'll start after you mess with it, but you're gonna put it in retarded because it doesn't fire at zero, it fires at eight, 10, 12 degrees before top dead center. This is easy to demonstrate with the timing cover and cylinder head removed, but in the car, you won't have that luxury. But you do have a crankshaft damper with at least one mark on it, if not it being degreed. And you can either take the valve cover off and watch the intake and exhaust valves, or you can just stick your finger in the spark plug hole while you rotate the engine. And when it's correct, it's going to spit air out at you. And when it's not, it won't. So when it spits air out at you, continue to bring it up to let's just say 12 degrees before top dead center. And then, this will actually line up with the number one terminal on the cap. You want your rotor pointing right there, and you can lock it down and it's gonna start. So you can break your cam in for 20 minutes, you're not gonna mess with the distributor, it's not gonna cough and fire to catch fire, it's gonna run. Obviously, after you've broken the cam or done your initial running or whatever your desire was, you can go ahead and set the timing correctly to whatever that's going to be. Good luck. If you're installing a crank trigger type ignition system, which does not have advanced and has a magnet down on the front of the crankshaft, your procedure would be the same except you would stop at whatever your total timing setting is going to be, 32, 34, 36 degrees. You would set your magnet up, pointing at the reluctor wheel where you want it to trigger. And then you would put your distributor in the same way. The only thing you need to watch for is how wide the terminal is in your cap. If you're going to retard the timing for nitrous, you want to be on the advanced side of the copper. That's why the old Ford style cap you see, like the MSD runs that big flat cap. Each terminal is probably a half inch wide, so when you take a lot of timing out electronically, you don't stroke the rotor button right off the terminal and then you blow the hood scoop off. So, rotor phasing, look it up. I'm sure if you're installing a crank trigger type ignition system, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. However, if you're doing it for the first time, I wish somebody had told me how to do it. I had to figure it out myself. <laughs> 